today and welcome to the Vibe Union podcast, chatting with Melbourne musicians, creatives and keeping an eye on the scene. I'm your host for today, Rath. Before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that we're recording on today, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Sovereignty was never ceded and these are stolen lands that we live and work on. We pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Today's episode is in uh, high anticipation for our upcoming gig at uh, Bar 303, a hip-hop and R&B showcase uh, model cadence. And this is number two. We're very excited to welcome to the podcast and in the future, welcome to the model cadence stage, Remedy. How you doing? Thank you for having me. Sorry, I'm kind of late. <laughs> Please. They don't know when this was recorded oh, or anything about it. <laughs> it's very true. Parking in the city is just the most overwhelming thing this ever. Build, this building is particularly confusing as mm. well. I've had multiple multiple people get lost in stairwells here. Coming home drunk in this building is really weird. Every door and every hallway looks exactly the same. Mm. It's all very bizarre. Yeah, I've actually been here before. For the my friend lives in the building across the street. You are like the fifth person who is, <laughs> who is coming here. So I've been to this building before. I've got a friend who lives here. That's but so it's funny. like all the signs say like, we will tow your car and it'll cost you like eight hundred dollars to yeah, claim yeah. it. And I'm like, I'm so scared. I but they have that, but then they also don't have particularly good markings of like where you're supposed to be out of park mm. or anything like that. It's very confusing. Um, yeah, I'm very unimpressed by, <laughs> by my own building. I've also never been up this early. Oh, really? Oh, my fucking God. I thought that, like, school traffic stopped when I stopped going to school. <laughs> right. Yes, of course. <laughs> and then, like, because it took me, like, an hour and a half to get here, mm-hmm. like, driving. I just realized that everyone's off to, ooh, off to work, off mm-hmm. to school, and mm-hmm. not a musician like me. And I just forgot yeah. that there's other people living a, a normal life. <laughs> well, a normal life is, I, I guess, I guess, in terms of... The masses, yes, it is normal, but... Considering my, like, work hours are, like, 12 a.m. and 3 a.m. Yeah, okay. So is that when you prefer to be writing as well? Is that your... Are those your golden hours? Um, I think writing is always, like, any time mm-hmm. um, or no time no time at all. It's really mm-hmm. just, like, depending where I am mentally. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But gigs always end up going so late. Mm. And I always, like, I never... I don't drink anymore, so mm-hmm. I I'm never getting like drunk at my shows like I used yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I'm driving home at like two a.m. and then it takes me like an hour to get home. So. Mm. Do you find um, uh, the drive home from a gig is is always I find a, a great place to when I don't drive, but being driven <laughs> being driven home <laughs> or catching the train home after a gig, and you've got the inspiration from being both live performing yourself, you got that feedback from the fans, but you're also mm. seeing amazing uh, other musicians on stage. Is that another, is that a big place of inspiration for you? I know that, yeah, I, I've seen your Instagram stories. I know a little bit about just like your, yeah, uh, I've seen you as a night owl for some time. <laughs> yeah, I think, I swear to God, I have some sleep disorder or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, but because yeah, I have like, I have chronic fatigue syndrome, mm-hmm. But I also have ADHD. Right. So I'm like chronically exhausted and tired, oh, but my brain never shuts the fuck up. So I'm just awake at all hours anyway. Just a walking zombie chronically. Oh, um, but I don't know. There's just like, I'll be so tired all day. Mm-hmm. As soon as it hits 11 p.m., I'm like awake. Interesting. It's weird. Interesting. That's so funny. A uh, polar opposite for me. I'm, I'm an old man. As soon as it hits like <laughs> eight o'clock at night, I'm done. I'm out. And then going to gigs and stuff like that. Yeah. Everyone else is ready to go. And I'm like, How do you deal with performing when like it's past your bedtime? <laughs> <laughs> um, I drink heavily and uh, I think uh, maybe maybe my social anxiety kicks in. <laughs> so mm. I'm just riding this, endre- this yeah, adrenaline the good rush. Old just adrenaline. Like, trying to get through it. Um, but no, I'm, def- I'm definitely always the uh, the first person who wants to <laughs> wants to go to bed. But then I'm also, I also prefer to be the early riser. I enjoy um, but then it's uh, been an interesting and frustrating experience, like trying to get um, other musicians. It's so, like I'm I'm up and ready to go at like six or seven in the morning. Like that's that's when we should be recording. And I was like, oh, dude, dude I'm not up until like eleven. I'm not <laughs> up until one. <laughs> that's why when I was like, when you were like, yeah, let's do nine. I was like, oh, I really regret saying this. Yeah, I didn't think this was. <laughs> hey, you could have pulled the plug. You could have pulled the plug. You could. Oh, I really want to be able to get up early. Yeah, I just got um, two jobs. Mm-hmm. So, because uh, I've been doing music full time for three years, but Amazing. now I'm kind of like um, putting it like 
on the back burner a little okay. bit not because i want to yep. but my health isn't letting me like like this gig um mm. we're doing together it's gonna be my last gig for like probably oh, wow. six months or something right. and i play shows like every week yeah so a little bit sad yeah um, but I've just like the past six gigs, I, I've had to cancel something like seven gigs in the past three months. Oh man. You know? And it's like, I just hate doing it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to focus on recording and just making myself happy yeah. because isolating myself to like be able to sing and then still being sick is so shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, I'm very, yeah, obviously there's a sad thing to hear, but I, but I'm going to get money. Yeah. And fully support. Like if you, if you, yeah, make yourself happy, like and focus on the recording. Mm. Um, Cause it's not something I ever want to give up. It's just yeah. like timing. Yeah. You know? And if you, I guess if you push through it now, then that's just going to limit the ability later. You might as well, yeah. Find the pace that suits. Mm. I mean, we're obviously constantly, um, I guess told but it's going to sound so vague and vapid, but told by society that like you're supposed to just go hard, you're supposed to hustle and hustle and, and work mm. and work and work and um, but music is supposed to be your own pace. So I think that's Yeah, and I was fine. actually saying this to my friend yesterday. I was like like obviously in, in creative creatives culture in, mm. in the entertainment industry, it's very much like go 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 like if you're not working 24 hours a day like you're slacking. Yeah. But especially for like writers and artists, we forget that living life is working. Yeah. Because that experience is how we create art. And if we're not experiencing anything, we're not doing our job right. And that's what I kind of realized. I was mm. locking myself in my room forever to stay well and to like do work. But I wasn't like, I had nothing mm. to write about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, do you consider yourself um, a bit of a... Um, oh, so... so uh, when it comes to your writing, are you looking inwards or do you find then you're an observer um, of and, and kind of relaying your vision to the world, the way that you see the world? Um, like, do I write about like my experiences? Well, so that, that idea of um, living life to then write about life. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, oh, if, yeah. if uh, back in the day when I've, yeah, if I've locked myself away for a long time and I'm just writing or just doing whatever, then I find myself writing about that lifestyle, that experience, which is sort of, I guess, writing about myself. But then to the outside world, who people who aren't doing that exact same thing, it feels a little weird. And now trying to go out more so then I can see social interactions between people and then I can write about that. Mm. Not necessarily, but like that's, uh, that'll be a, a trigger to, for the next piece. Definitely. I, and I feel like there's so much we can write about um like i love like writing about friends experiences or like my own or something i made up in my head mm -hmm. um or just like being inspired by a particular emotion mm. or like topic but i'm just like i attract the worst people <laughs> and it's a talent <laughs> and i need to abuse it so i make good music <laughs> yeah 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 those people are always going to be good fodder for the for, fodder for the art <laughs> yeah like i always just like i just have an energy about me that makes me interact with like the wildest shit mm -hmm. and just have to deal with so many things no one should have to deal with mm. and i'm like you know what it's actually good because i'm a songwriter <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, you've um, got a new single out. Come, oh, sorry, a single coming out. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, and it Can lines I just up. quickly say? Yeah, of course. I fucking love, like, I love it when you're doing, like, all this promo for, like, a single or something. Yeah. And then someone that's, like, trying to start in your DMs is like, yo, yo, I love that new single of yours. It's fire. <laughs> and you're like, bitch, is it out, you lying shit. Amazing. <laughs> It's so funny. You just call them out. And they're like, I'm like, yeah, well, what, what did you like about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, if you're going to be scamming on people on Instagram, you got to try a little harder. I am, <laughs> I am sick and sick to death of it. There's a, a friend of ours, um, uh, in the scene, um, got, uh, hacked recently. I'm not going to name names cause whatever. I think I know. Okay. Um, it's so sad when it happens. It's, it's terrible. It's really frustrating. It's a lot of time and, uh, and work that goes into building an Instagram account um, mm. and potentially all lost. But the scam has started messaging me through this person's old account. Same. And I've started interacting back with them and start having a bit of a back and forth trying to just 
I'm just having fun with it. But they start sending me photos of a car, being like, "Yo, check out this! Check out my new wheels! Check out this this thing I bought!" It's like, dude, that license plate is not from Australia. Oh my god! <laughs> if you're gonna do that shit, do your fucking research. First of all, look at their photos, and then look at the photos you're sending. These are two very different styles. They're not gonna be exactly not gonna be in that car. They're not gonna be photographing in that way. Mm. And the license plates are wrong. Come on. And it's like in. all the scammers are using like the same script at the moment. Yeah. It, I'm just like switch it up. Come mm-hmm. on. Be creative. Maybe you'll actually get some. Well, actually, I mean, they are clearly getting some people, but. Um, Whenever they message you like, oh, I really need your help. <laughs> I like block, like they'll be like my best friend. I'll block the account yeah. like straight away. And I felt bad because like it's happened recently and I blocked so many people and now I've like, they've gotten their account back. So I yeah. followed them back. Uh, and I just hope they understand that I'm like, no, I don't hate you at all. I just didn't <laughs> want to get hacked. But I, it's like really awkward because I'm just like. That's good to hear that they got their accounts back because I've definitely seen some people where it's just it's just a lost cause. They've gone through the Instagram mm. account, uh, help desks and nothing's coming up. Yeah. Um, so to circle back, so uh, new single is coming out on the 17th. And I know it's not out yet because I've done my research. I'm not trying <laughs> to hack you. You know the date. I forgot the date. <laughs> it lines up very well because the next day is Mortal Cadence. So there we go. I'm assuming That's... we can hear that single uh, mm-hmm. both the day before and then performed live at Mortal Cadence, I hope. Hell yeah. Excellent. It's going to be amazing. It's called Love Drunk. The promo involves a lot of blood. <laughs> Do you want to uh, explain kind of uh, what the single is about? How would you get us hyped for it? I want to hear um, your, your words. So it's like I always write just on a whim. Mm-hmm. I always have since I was little. It's just like I just got where it takes me. But with mm-hmm. this song, I actually like tried to write a pop song. Yeah, cool. Um, not super hard, but I just thought about it for five more minutes mm-hmm. instead of just throwing yeah. it all together. <laughs> Um, but I produced the whole thing and I'm very proud of the production. Amazing. Um, yeah. And it's kind of about being so like entranced and intoxicated in love mm-hmm. that like your judgment's completely clouded and like you're feeling like just out of control and kind of fucked up. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, yeah. And it's funny cause I'm literally sober, but, <laughs> 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 um, but wasn't always. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And like the promo. It's funny. I got almost banned from TikTok. I'm so I close. I saw that. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm creative. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen much worse shit on TikTok. I, I, I'm very upset that that's literally. That's I was like, it's literally like red honey. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. I can't do sticky stuff. I can't imagine it was what, that so photo, gross. <laughs> what that photo shoot must have been like. It was, oh, like, it was... When it dried, yeah, it was super sticky. And when it dried, like it stick my limbs together, and I have to like pull apart my arms and legs oh, and try God. and look hot at the same no. time. <laughs> and all over my face, it was in my nose. No nightmare. Oh, I was up my ass. <laughs> it was so bad. Anyway, the things I do for art, but it basically symbolizes. Everyone thinks I'm just crazy, which isn't far mm-hmm. from the truth. Yeah. Um, but it symbolizes like destroying yourself. Um, emotionally and physically for love, like killing mm-hmm. yourself for others mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Because I, in the majority of my relationships, have very much put that other person before myself mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and completely stripped myself of any sanity I have yeah. um, in order to make that other person happy or to love them to my fullest extent. So it's kind of symbolizing that because mm-hmm. that was, I don't know, what I thought about when I thought of the word love. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm sure a very relatable to- topic. I'm sure we've all uh, made bad decisions and thrown ourselves at maybe the wrong people in the wrong ways. Mm-hmm. Um, but by God, if those aren't always the best ones to write about. <laughs> always, always. The good ones, you're just like, what was her name again? Yeah. I Literally. love... I love going through a breakup and like, oh, no, I'm so sad. But rubbing my hands secretly, like, oh, man, I'm going to write an album. This is going to be fucking sick. People are going to love this shit way better than when I'm happy. That stuff's Mm -hmm. boring. My goodness. Honestly. Um, But it's also like the first song of my alter ego. Oh, okay. Um, So like the red hair is like Mm -hmm. the awakening of my alter ego because her color is red. Cool. Yeah, okay. Um, Yeah. And I've been making music. It's like written by her recently. Um, and this is like the first taste. It's still like PG for her. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the next like year and stuff, there'll be a lot more vulgar shit. There probably 
cool. get my parents to disown me. <laughs> All right, so alter ego coming out. Interesting. Yeah. Do you find that's a um, so is this a new thing to to write from a character's perspective? Has it always been much more personal? Yeah, it's okay. definitely very new. Remedies like uh, me. Mm-hmm. It's literally me. Yeah. Um, and I know that that's like a good thing and it's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not sure how, how you are with it, but like I know a lot of people have like their artistry is their their character. Yeah. Um, kind of like their higher self. Are you yeah. like that? Um, yeah, I think an exaggerated version of myself mm. for sure. Um, but I've also had a big, uh, I'm just a big sci-fi nut. So I've always had my post-apocalyptic kind of stuff mm. as well. So, um, a couple of alter egos here and there, but for the most part, yeah, I definitely, definitely think just a heightened version of myself. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. It's like, so like my alter ego, Nikki is like a heightened version of like my strongest, like most powerful self. Mm-hmm. Um, but then remedies literally mean it's very like girl next door i feel Mm -hmm. like quirky little i don't know how to interact with people because i'm (laughs) fucking stupid um and yeah it's very like emotional music yeah but then nikki's like i gotta go really grip bitch and Mm -hmm. i'm a bad bitch (laughs) (laughs) um if the alter ego is named nikki uh, mm-hmm. Maybe it's a too an obvious of a connection, but is there some Nicki Minaj uh, influence there? Surprisingly, like no, but I love Nikki. Mm. I'm um, just big on she's uh, big on the alter egos and big yeah, on yeah, yeah, she really is. But um, no, like it wasn't inspired by her, but I am inspired by her. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she's definitely um a little voice in my head when I'm like <laughs> writing and like doing the alter ego kind of music. Mm -hmm. Um, But no, I think it started when I was in like second grade. Mm -hmm. Um, And the girl, I don't know if the guys would, but I would always play like, like the mom and dad game, like the family game. And it was like, Mm -hmm. like one person would be the mom, one person would be the dad, like one person would be the daughter, all that stuff. Yeah. Did not play myself, but (laughs) saw, saw it being played. And I think I, boys threw rocks at each other. <laughs> and I always wanted to be, I was obsessed with Hannah Montana. I'll just give that off. Yeah. But I wanted, I was 16. Mm-hmm. I was the babysitter. Mm-hmm. My name was Nikki and mm-hmm. I had blonde hair. Amazing. So it was just this thing that came up yeah. when I was like seven. And then it just like subconsciously followed me. And now she's returned. Yeah. And she's still a babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Fuck yeah. Um, And you said this is all your own production as well. And I I know you've been a producer for a long time. Did the production come first? Were you producer first and then singer or other way around? Singer first, Mm -hmm. but really shit singer. (laughs) Um, I only started getting lessons in like 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously I've had this whole vocal damage voice sort of thing. It's been a bit funky. But I started producing in like late 2019. Okay. So bad. So bad. Congratulations was like, it's still up and pick up mm. the phone were like two of the first songs I ever made. Yeah. Um, but I was just using loops from Splice. It was yeah. so shit. Like hey, my- that, If you're paying for Splice, well, use the fucking loops. <laughs> I'm trying, yeah, I try, I, try, I try and embrace it. Like I pay for this shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking it's, use it. It's fire. <laughs> yeah. But my like, my whole songs were like two tracks, mm-hmm. just like a drum loop. <laughs> and I'm fucking- if it gets the job done, I think I think it's much better to go underproduced than over, overproduced. If you just That's jam a true. bunch of samples in there, it's a waste of time. No one can tell what's going on. A hundred percent. Especially you're you're the focus. And pick up the phone was an absolute banger. That was what, <laughs> that was my introduction um, uh, of you as, um, as well. And it's catchy, and the production in its minimalist form means I think there's nothing getting in the way of that hook. And Thank if that's you. if that's what the production is there to do, which I think it is that that's what it's there to do. Then I think that's perfect. Just let it be the bed for, 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 mm. for that. Yeah. Thank you. I really want to like redo congratulations to pick up the phone. Cause mm-hmm. I like, I'd love to do them with like a, at least congratulations with a live band. It's like mm. a recording. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I eventually want to like venture into soul music. Cool. But I don't have the money to, like track a band (laughs) this is this is the hard part yeah 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 Yeah. but what about you like what's your uh dream genre to do um i guess i've always wanted to be 
Flying Lotus. <laughs> Hell <laughs> or, yeah. Or um, very big into JPEG Mafia at the moment, mm. which is, I think, yeah, I, I really admire um, that you're doing all your own production because that's, yeah, that's right where I, I, I like that um, that place of being the producer and the performer at the same time and not saying you can't do that. Uh, and I'm saying you don't have to, do, you have to do that at all. Um, and there's obviously, I mean, Kendrick Lamar is, is obviously someone who, has a, uh, a beautiful knack for being one of the best performers ever and mm-hmm. finding the right producers to bring that to life. Um, but my heart and soul lives with people like JPEG Mafia, people like um, uh, LP from Run the Jewels and that, you know, that kind of crowd. Um, they're like, yeah. they're like cat album. Yeah. <laughs> meow, the meow the Jewels. Did it for the meme. Fucking hell. I, I don't, I had this like inside joke with an old friend of mine about like, <laughs> just the word meow it's mm-hmm. a long story now i have i just go purr mm-hmm. like slay <laughs> um but anyway but no we had this like joke and it was like during like 2020 mm-hmm. and i just searched up like meow on spotify mm-hmm. and there was this entire fucking album yeah yeah i so can't good. remember what happened how it worked out but um for anyone who doesn't know run the jewels um american hip-hop duo um, who are, I, I love them to death as well because they met when they were like late thirties or something like that as well. They'd already been doing it for a long time. And then their biggest project to their biggest call to fame was when they're getting close to 40 and they're still writing fucking hip hop bangers. It's a dream. Um, and it ma- makes me feel better about <laughs> maybe not, maybe not popping off until yeah. later in life. Um, but I think they put out a tweet just saying, hey, if um, if this gets so many retweets, we'll put out a a, a cat based remix version of our album. <laughs> and um, fucking power to them that they stuck to their guns and actually yeah. put out an entire remix album. It's 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 their album. The vocals are the same. All the beats are made with cat meows and lions and shit. <laughs> and it's fucking. It's kind of fire. There's some fucking crazy shit it's in there. It's really lit. cool. It's yeah. kind of lit. Kind of kind of slays. Mm. <clears throat> Do you find um, uh, easier to write to your own beats or easier to write to other people's beats? Because I know talking to other producers who rap um, that that can be a bit of a frustration at times. Um, I think if like it's a beat I've made and it's like finished, mm-hmm. or I'm like so fucking inspired and I have this like super. Uh, explicit vision in my head mm-hmm. um otherwise it's just like fuck this yeah like i i love writing something that's finished because then i don't have to overthink two things yeah 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 um because i'm such a perfectionist that sometimes it's just so difficult um but i i love i still love writing to like type beats when i'm bored yeah just to like practice my writing yeah um and it teaches you uh, I think, well, yeah, I, I definitely think that, like, because you, you can't fix anything for a start. You can't listen and think, like, oh, man, that snare is just not quite, it's not quite loud enough or maybe mm. it's too loud. When I'm rapping to my own beats 100%, I'm just like, ah, I got to turn that down, turn this down, turn that down. Oh, fuck, I haven't actually rapped yet. I haven't actually written anything. Um, but writing to type beats, 100%, you, 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 you try shit that you would never try in your own stuff, mm. which is really fucking cool. I've been writing to, like, fucking the baby beats. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just like producing stresses me the fuck out. Yeah. Like I just love doing it when I'm not thinking Mm -hmm. or I'm just like hyper focusing on my Ritalin's kicking in. Yeah. Fucking ADHD. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, it just like it'll make me have a fucking breakdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah. But it's fun when it works. Mm hmm. Uh, what are you using to produce? Ableton. Ableton. What Excellent. about you? Yep, Ableton. Uh, do you want an Ableton uh, merch bag? Hell yeah. Right, I'll hook you up. I've got one in the cupboard. Hell yeah. <laughs> Shout out to a local Ableton branch who fucking hooked Vibe Union up with some That's shit. That's so dope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you say you've been gigging um, like once a week um, recently. Is that right? Um, not recently because I've told... I've said no to everyone, but right. like, I think if I was supposed to do all the gigs I was supposed to do, mm-hmm. but I got, I got sick and I got COVID and my mom yep. got COVID and it was just right. fucked. Um, uh, but no, I typically would be like doing a show like at least every two weeks or like two shows mm-hmm. in a week. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah, which I was doing more shows than like anyone I know. Mm. And I'm like the one with the fucking yeah, disability yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. stupid voice disorder. So it was like, yeah, I just love performing so much and it's so much fun. Um, but I've been trying to record. I have like 30 demos I've been in to record for like three years oh, and wow. I just keep focusing on performing. Yeah. And I need to actually like focus on yeah. the music. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously we had basically a two year gap where we could not really perform. Mm. Um, is there anything that has changed? Is there any kind of experiences you've had coming back to the stage after that two years that wasn't there before? I think I started performing in like December of 2019. Right. Um, so maybe like June, July, August of 2019, I was like busking and stuff mm-hmm, and I was mm-hmm. doing like open mic nights and that's how I met some of like your crew and stuff, mm-hmm. which love. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like Dave and stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, I met him at like Shout my first Dilly. ever open mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love him so much. Um, yeah, and that was super low key. I was really new to it. I was really shit. So I was doing really small gigs at like bars or Section 8. Yeah. Um, I saw you at Gummo was my first introduction, I believe. Yeah. I believe Dave Dilly was there as well. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. They have fire toasties. I love it there. That was a great joint. Um, yeah, shout out uh, Cafe Gummo. I don't think I do as lot, much hip hop anymore, but if you're into punk music and I think um, like higher pirate punk <laughs> and folk punk, man, they got you covered. Check oh that my shit God. out. Informary. I just really want to do a gig there again because yeah. I love the stuff so much. They're so lovely. Yeah. And super anti-fascist and I fuck with it so hard. I love how unashamedly um, they are about that. It's really fucking mm. sweet. Yep. Definitely. Um, yep. And then like 2020 happened. Yep. Um, and then I, I performed quite a bit in like 2021. Right. Like I, I was doing a decent amount of shows. Mm. Um, and I think that's the difference from the shows now where there was like caps of like, you'd sell out a venue, but it'd be like 50 people mm, in mm-hmm. like a massive room. Yeah. Um, and then maybe like 30 people would come. Yeah. So, you know, it was very different. And now like shows have a higher capacity, mm-hmm. but I just haven't been able to like play many of them because mm. of getting sick but i yeah. think that and there's a lot more energy in the crowd now yeah that people are less like riddled with anxiety yeah they're over it they're done um they're done worrying about shit they just want to get out and have a good time which mm. is uh both stressful because <laughs> i'm like yeah. fuckers, you're gonna get me sick um i've spent yeah i spent the last two weeks sick and missed a couple of shows and it's a fucking nightmare um are you so, feeling better now? Yeah, getting there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so big crowds are definitely still stress me, stressing me out because, you know, as performers, if you miss a gig, you can't go to Centrelink and be like, "Yo, I need my, I need my fucking my money back." Oh, I need to get covered for that, covered for that shit, like you can from an office. But the crowd is keen. The crowd is really, really eager, which is really cool to see. Which is very, very exciting. Um, yeah. Remedy, I know that you have a uh, you have a bit of a hard out today, so that's I think we can I think we can wrap it up nice and short today. Sure thing. Um, but thank you for coming on. This has been outstanding. Very very exciting. Very very excited to see you perform at Mortal Cadence. Hopefully, on I'm well June enough. June eighteenth, Bar Three Hundred Three. Everyone, keep your fingers crossed. For Remedy and all other performers in Melbourne to not get sick. Um, wear your masks on tramps thank you very much um, Remedy's new single Love Drunk is out on June 17th start rocking that shit on June 17th and then come out and see her June 18th the very next day at Bar 303 is there anything you want to plug besides the single anything else you want to mention before we close um, up uh, my PayPal is in my bio we'll put it in the um, link in the description give me all your fucking money yeah 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 <laughs> Um, yeah, pay for my medical bills yes. and I'll send you feet pics. <laughs> my feet are ugly as fuck. <laughs> There's I, a market. There's always a market. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got clown feet. Anyway. That's a beautiful place to end it. Thank you so much, Remedy. <laughs> You're a legend. Thanks for having and me. And we'll see you June 18th, Bar 303. This has been the Vibe Union Podcast. Subscribe, like, comment, share, send it to your mums. Why not? Bye. Bye.